Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's fair to say that the masses are finally starting to wake up to the point that we are in right now. We're going to talk about something slightly different today. We're not going to be on the finance topics because I was doing some searches earlier looking at certain trends and patterns and I thought it was quite fascinating. And I'm going to show you straight away on the shared screen here. I started to look at some of these trends that have been increasing recently. So this is an example, how to survive. This is the United States. This is prepping in the United Kingdom. We saw this big increase. Uh, prepping United States is also up. And then I, just to throw a wild one in there, I searched for prepping Thailand. <laughs> it's like, it's flatlined. You know, and I searched for a few other countries, it's like zero because uh, it's more of a Western thing, I think, at the moment where we're concerned about food and everything else. Now, other ones, they wouldn't even give the search rankings. So I'll just show you. I'll click refresh here. Oh, typical. They, the one time I've been clicking this for hours and then eventually it just refreshed. So we've got this increase. I'm glad that's happened. Hold on, hold on. Let's see if it's going to show us what I want. Yes, here we go. Okay, I've been waiting for this. So things like nuclear, which we're hearing about all the time. Look at this. Look at these spikes here. I'm amazed they actually showed us that. And then I was looking at other, th other search terms. So all the sort of search terms that people type in when they're concerned about certain things. And, and look at this. We had this societal collapse. We saw this massive amount of search terms. So I went on to Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, I know, Wikipedia. And I thought this was quite interesting. And I want to show you some of the reports. We've got loads of reports and data and things to go through. But before then, I wanted to show you this. They had a, a sort of section on this. Virtually all civilizations have suffered such a fate regardless of their size or complexity. I thought that was very honest for Wikipedia. And then they have the reasons for it. So environmental change, depletion of resources, unsustainable complexity. So I've highlighted in red here the ones that I think we have right now. Invasion, we've definitely got an invasion right now. Disease, not so much. I think we're in a different situation than we were previously, but you never know when some wild thing might come out of a lab or something crazy like that. And then we have decay of social cohesion, definitely got that. Rising inequality, 100%. The richest people are getting richer, the poorest people are getting poorer, the middle class are being pulled down. Uh, this was a weird one, long-term decline of cognitive abilities. I have never seen that before when I've been doing my research on these topics. That is a very interesting one. Uh, loss of creativity. Well, that's what AI is doing at the moment. It's really uh, taking that out. And then misfortune. So I was looking through these trends. I thought they were all quite interesting. And then I noticed the trend on emergency food supplies and kits are through the roof. The increase is absolutely exponential in people who are going out and buying all of this stuff. And I'm not saying that in a a detrimental way. I think it's important that everyone has some emergency supplies. I mean, I, I think people who don't have it are um, taking a lot of risk. And then we get onto all the crazy stuff like your CBRN. So that's uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear survival kit. <laughs> you know, it goes to all this sort of stuff. And before we go on to these reports then, just remember I made a video here, it's this one on the left, and it was called 30 items you need before a great depression. So if you're not sure, you know, some of the stuff to do, this has got almost half a million views. So it's obviously, uh, it went down well, this video. And I was just reading a couple of the comments on this actually. And this lady said, uh, she started listening to me. I didn't actually, uh, I must've seen the comment at the time, but just pulling it up here. I started listening to you in March, 2020 and convinced my husband we needed to buy a wood stove. When the unusual snows happened in Texas, my friend's mother who lived in an assisted facility was without power for a week and it was in the 30s in their building. So that's very, very cold. This was the second kick in the pants to get the stove. Today I'm sitting in our porch with my wood stove 
uh, going. I'm so glad I, I did this because um, her husband passed away and she has a lot of peace because of the stove. So I thought that was a really nice comment actually that I um, just wanted to read out to you uh, all. Now, I wanted to show you this. This is from the FEMA.gov website, National Preparedness Reports. And if you, you can click on this, this is the latest report here. It just came out a few months ago now. And if you scroll down, I'm not sure exactly what page, I'll grab what page in a second. This is what they said is the main threats that are coming up for communities. So you don't even need to do all your own research. You can just read reports like this or reference things from this video. So what is the most likely threat? And look at this. One, it's out of a scale of zero to 100, so zero to 100%. Cyber attack, they have this 100%. Look, uh, you can see it here, here's the blue line, 100%. So they have number of communities, zero to 100. I thought that was really strange that FEMA have put that on there because that's the same thing the WEF warned about as well. They also warned about a cyber attack. And we only talked about this yesterday. And I was, and this is before I made today's video. I didn't even know what video I was gonna, I was gonna make today because I wanted to do something a little bit different so we're not just stuck on the same things every single uh, day on the channel. And what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about critical infrastructure. Well, this is why I think it's important and to be prepared, I'm not saying become a doomsday prepper like the, the TV show, as it were. If you if you want to do that, great. I think that's a fantastic thing. But, and then you've got people on the opposite side who will laugh and say, oh, I'm not doing any prepping. I think they are um, very crazy. <laughs> Sorry to use that word if that's you. But I think it's crazy not to do any prepping at all in this world that we live in today. And look, I'm, I, I'm by no means on either extreme. I don't have a, a, a nuclear fallout bunker and, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I'm definitely, uh, you know, prepared for a lot of these events. I think most people should be. Because you think if there's this massive cyber attack, you think of the risk of that if the, the critical infrastructure fails and there's no electricity and there's no gas and there's no things like that, heating during the winter time when the stores get ransacked. What happened yesterday? People went to the supermarkets. This was yesterday's video. They couldn't even buy food because of this the whole digital system failing. You think if there's a cyber attack and we're all on this digital system, everything's down. And they're saying on here, this is not me saying it. This is FEMA, 100 out of 100. They're, they're giving this, the, 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 the uh, I guess it's a risk level of it. You've got you to take these sort of things seriously. I mean, I really mean this. And then let's look at what else they have. So pandemic, they have another, <laughs> another. Uh, so they've got a pandemic here, human pandemic. They have a flood risk, active shooter, earthquakes, um, other human caused, wildfires, hazmat release chemical. Hazmat release chemical, didn't we see that in Ohio? Over 40% chance there. Hurricane type in explosive devices. Gosh, this this video is going to get, get censored right away. Using all the keywords here, aren't I? And um, if you remember the global risks report, I did a full video on this. I think I <clears throat> probably made it way too long because not uh, everybody watched this video. So that was a lesson for me. I won't make it so detailed and complex and long in future. But I did a big video on it. But you can see here within the purple, they had misinformation, disinformation is the number one risk to the world in the next two years. Well, they also have the cybersecurity aspect, which I would say is a lot more <laughs> of a risk than mis and disinformation. But that's the big one everyone's talking about is this cyber attack. It's, it's a, you can read all the reports, you can go through everything, and um, it's easy to find these reports, and I've done videos on them, as I said. But they've just done another outlook report on global cybersecurity. So you've got to take what these people say very, very seriously. And when I say that, I do not like the WEF, as I've said on a lot of videos. I really don't. So I'm not saying to take them seriously as if to look up to them as they're the gurus and they know all and, you know, they're here to help you and guide you. I don't mean it like that. I mean, take what they say really seriously, 
study it, even if you know you have to find the time to read up on some of this stuff or just watch some of my back videos, because they are very, very, very accurate on predicting what is going to happen next. They've been so accurate for the last five or six years now on almost everything. So you've really got to take it seriously and look into these things. And also you've got to look at why has everybody started prepping? Why is society, people who you would never think of, in fact, let me come back, think people you would never think of are now attending um, you know, all these prepping shows. I was looking at the statistics and the demographics on it. Traditionally, if I would go to a show, it would be people, I mean, it was the same, it was the same person. It was mainly men or if their wives came. Yeah, there's some women, uh, but I'm, I want to just give you the main demographic here. It's mainly white men, bigger build, military, police type, fire service, um, or X. It was this sort of people, more right-leaning, conservative. That is what you typically saw. Now, that still is, I would say, the bulk of people. But what you're starting to see now is a lot of other people. I was at an event and I was really surprised by the change of the demographics. And even talking to, I spoke to one guy, I think I told you about this before, and he was super, super like extreme left-wing guy. So it was hard to, it was hard to talk to him, but you know, with some of his viewpoints. But even he was getting into all the prepping stuff and he was buying all these different things because he was saying he just doesn't trust the governments anymore. And then it's not, you know, Trump or Biden type thing. He just didn't trust any of the governments and he wanted to do all this prepping for his family. That is the trends we're seeing. So I don't think it's a case of people who are already interested in prepping are driving this trend higher. I think the people, what's driving the trend is more people coming in now and the people who you wouldn't have thought of before. But drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts on that. So yeah, we've got a, a new report out. I'm not gonna go through the report. You can, you can have a look at that report if it's of interest to you. But this is what people are spending money on at the moment. It's mainly food and water, which is great because this is the most important thing. But again, as I've said a lot of times, don't just go out and buy water buy a filtration system for water, a standalone that doesn't need power and, and things like that. That's the first thing that I've always said to all of you that you want to get hold of because without water, you are in big trouble. What, you're going to last a couple of days? Toilet paper, medical supplies. <laughs> yeah, uh, I wouldn't say toilet paper is second on the list, but, but anyway, you know, so just go through. These are really interesting stats that you can have a look at. It shows you who the people are that are prepping at the moment, uh, what people are buying. It shows the different generations, X, Y, and Z, or Z, what people are buying. It's really, really, just pause the video or do screenshots if you're interested, or you can read this article, which is 74 million Americans preparing or prepping for disaster. And it shows the amount of money that was spent 11 billion just in the last 12 months, 11 billion. That's how much people are now spending. And it also shows where, which regions as well, people are spending the most. But this is interesting because if you're not preparing very much yet, well, we already know that we're going into this, this new period that is gonna be quite difficult. Everyone's saying it, all the politicians are saying it, different leaders across different societies and industries are saying it we know that things are coming. I saw this uh, today, a nuclear target map for the USA. And I thought, okay, I've got to show you guys this just in case you're in the US. So avoid, avoid, <laughs> avoid these spots. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me. The things, and it shows the, the top spots, New York City, Washington, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, all these sort of places where I know a lot of you, a lot of you live. I just thought, uh, you know, would I move out of these places? Uh, depends how much crime and issues there are. I wouldn't move just because the media is telling us, oh, here's the map. You need to get away from all these hotspots. Uh, no, I mean, life's too short. You just got to enjoy your, enjoy your life. You can't be worried <laughs> about nukes coming over. But it's not just the US. This is the UK as well. We've got this massive influx now of uh, survivalists, as they're called in the UK, survivalists, 
And this has been spurred by lockdowns, floods, war in Europe. And so, so these stores are just popping up everywhere. There you go, you got your baked beans as usual. Uh, the, seams of, the scenes of empty food shelves caused by panic buying early in the lockdowns have exposed Britain's fragile retail supply chains and spurred a burgeoning industry that targets people hoarding essentials for the kind of doomsday scenario that lockdowns made more imaginable. These are all really interesting articles. This one, uh, you can see it's from The Guardian. If you want a, a little bit of extra reading, Wall Street Journal as well did it, but they focused on other aspects. Um, they're talking about these new fringe groups that are, are coming through. There's a lot of articles on this, but I wanted to just show you. Ah, here we go. So this is an example. This is a, a guy, he plays his PS5. He loves his comforts, 39 year old healthcare IT worker. That, and yet he's bought bug out bags and uh, all sorts of things, coloring books for his two young sons. Um, you know, this is, this is the way it's all going now. It's quite interesting the way we're, we're moving with all the, the prepping stuff. We're seeing this big increase in, in, in searches, this big increase in people buying and spending money on this, uh, in, this, in this sector. But I just thought that was an interesting one for you today. I just thought I'd share it with you because I thought it was quite interesting. So there you go. That's you up to date. I'll see you tomorrow. Fingers crossed if we've got good weather for the weekly walk and talk. Take care. God bless.